Hello gamers, humanity is screwed, because I've installed about a dozen mods, some of which add new factions, like Iron Shell, or the, the Knights of Lud, and some of which try to eat you, like these guys over here. If you actually look through all these, that is a lot of planets with a lot of population, and they're going to be sending attack fleets to take over the core worlds. The bugs up here are going to be killing a lot of people. But it gets worse than that because somebody was like, hey, the Hivers, even though they're bugs, use a lot of lasers and fighters. I want them to use melee attacks. So that's what they did. They made another mod that adds bugs that do melee attacks and filled the void with those. So in the top left, we've got to deal with the Hivers. In the bottom left, we have to deal with the symbiotic void creatures. In the bottom right, I don't even know what this is. I'm not sure what mod added this, so who knows? It could be a new threat, it could be a new opportunity. And then in the top right, there's this dark pulsar that's just way, way off, way off from everything else, which is weird because there's other dark pulse or black pulsars just sitting in the sector. So the fact that this one is way off in the corner, I don't know. It's just a special one. You know, it's a bit of a snowflake. And then in the center up here, we have the Red Singularity. Some of those I know are added by Knights of Lud, and I know they're very dangerous. I don't know what's in them. I guess we'll have to find out. On top of that, I'm on iron mode. So if I fuck, if I, <laughs> if I mess around and find out, then I will be in bad shape afterwards. Now, to be fair, there's a lot of other human factions that have been added, bolstering their numbers, including this one, which seems perfectly primed to take the brunt of the attack, at least in the beginning. But overall, the power level of these factions, especially as they fight amongst each other, because of course humanity wouldn't just unite in the face of an alien threat. <laughs> what, do you th what do you think? Have you not met a human being before? Come on, of course not. So naturally, this is going to be not an immediate conquest, but given enough time, they will overwhelm humanity. And the only one who can stop it is us. Big brain energy, that's me. I'm that guy. Unfortunately, we really don't have the kind of fleet necessary to take on this level of threat. I mean, look at us. We've got a wolf, we've got a shepherd, we've got a level one. What are we supposed to do? Well, you do what any good self-respecting captain would do. You start killing pirates until you get enough cash to buy more ships. Obviously. I mean, what else would I do? All of these pirates seem to be grouped together in the same system, actually. That's kind of interesting. Now, ultimately, this fleet is mostly going to be focused on midline. And in fact, my long-term goal, or I suppose medium-term goal, is to join the Persian League. Because everybody just kicks their ass. Everybody's like, oh, the Persian League is going to blockade me? Hmm, but they said if I join the Persian League, then they won't blockade me. Well, screw you. I'm just going to blow you up anyways. Why would I want to join you and pay you money? I would rather be an independent. I am an independent, self-made spacer. I would never do such a thing. That's the way that people normally play. I'm going to do it a little different. I, since I'm doing a midline-themed fleet, might as well join the midline-themed faction. I will take their offer to join the Persian League, although I'm not going to be paying 20%. I'm going to be paying a lot less than that. Uh, whether that's because, you know, maybe I'll pay 5%, we'll see. Because there's a, there's a few different ways that you can join. One is you can get it in for free if you both defeat the blockade and steal the, the pristine nanoforge from Kazaron. Right, if you do both, you get in for free. But if you only do one, then you can get in by paying 5%. And 5% of your colony income is small enough that I might do it just to skip the other event. We'll see. For starters, uh, we need to make sure that this actually is good and not bad. I mean, blast doors? Really? No thanks. Don't need that. Point defense? I, I You do actually kind of want point defense because salamanders get really annoying without it. But, I could also drop the point defense and get more flux. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And throw an unstable injector for good measure. 
Who needs... Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'll just eat the salamanders. It's fine. I'm sure it won't cause any issues. And this is not foreshadowing anything. I mean, it might happen. I don't know. Obviously, can't really afford anything here. This is Diablo Avionics, one of the factions that have been added through modding. It's one of the classic, oldest mods in the game. Some very impressive technology, some very impressive stuff. As a matter of fact, some of the frigates I may want to add to my fleets at some point. Even though I am doing a midline-themed playthrough, I'll dabble with some of the modded content just to show it off a little bit. But yeah, I don't see myself buying much. Antimatter blasters are nice. And you know what, actually I'll just buy those and toss them into the cargo hold. Another thing I've done is I've skipped the quest. The main quest line, we've skipped that. We just start with the Anna's device. Because as good it's the writing is good. I'd rather not play through the whole thing all over again. You know, forgive me, but I'm not gonna do that again. We've already done that once. Don't need to do that again. And Nexerlin, that's part of... Nexerlin existed before the storyline existed, so naturally they're like, hey, if you want to skip the storyline, here's an option for that. And I take that. And you should take that. It is a little bit cheap, starting with the NS device and being able to use gates right away. But we are up against quite incredible odds. So I think that's fair. Let's give ourselves a little bit of an advantage. I mean, I've stripped away the Academy stipend. I've stripped away... I'm not going to be doing commissions either. That's what I was thinking. Passive income from the Academy or from commissions, that's gone. Now, I'm not doing the Spacer Star either, so I don't have that. No thanks. Reckless? Nah. I don't need that energy. I don't need you bringing that energy into my fleet. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a little concerned trying to take on... It is just a strike. I can probably take on that one. The Enforcer, though, is actually... I mean, I can definitely 1v1 all these other guys. And then the Enforcer will... It'll take a while, but I can definitely do it. And you know what? Let's go. All right. Yellow primary star, yellow primary star, giant primary star. So you are here. Okay. Let's go do some bounties. A little different from last time. Where we started with smuggling and then upgraded from smuggling... To exploration. Now hold on, my frame rate seems a little low. I'm gonna fix that. Alright, that should be better. Let's get on with it. Yeah, that looks nice and smooth. Okay. Let's turn that off, because we're not exactly trying to lure anybody in. Although to be fair, we don't really need to worry about storms this early just because the damage is so minimal. Oh no, I have to pay two extra supplies? You're kidding me. I'm screwed. It's Jover. Just kidding. I have lots of supplies. I can pay two of them to save... Well, not really a lot of time, but... I'm a bit of a speed demon. I'd rather not waste my time. Travel? It's not very exciting. Not until you get special abilities that let you jump across the sector. Then it's a little exciting. Okay, what? Oh, yes, of course. A single Fulgent that is not even active. That's worth a danger notification. I mean, you would agree, of course. Surely. The, uh, the notification is definitely worth it. You're a little short on fuel. Maybe I should have bought some before leaving. But I'll probably get some from killing the enemy. That's the way it usually works. Arid World. Alright, well... That would be this one. Yeah, I don't really want to activate that anyways. Don't need to. Plus it actually costs heavy machinery, which you don't start with that much. I'm going to need all the heavy machinery I can get. It's funny how a lot of costs and a lot of things in this game start out relevant at like level 1 to 2, but then quickly become trivial. Almost like the early game was balanced to last a lot longer than it actually does. Which might actually just be true. That might be the way that it, all of this was designed at a time when the early game lasted longer. And is now out of date. Yeah, see, this is the problem with having no point defense, is salamanders are kind of annoying. You definitely can avoid them. Face skimmer is pretty useful for that. 
because now it'll hit me in the shield. It's just a little bit annoying, especially when there's a lot of them. It can be pretty overwhelming to try and dodge all of them. <sighs> okay, that was pretty... That was a lot closer than I would have liked, but... I think we're doing good. I need to hit some. There we go. Awesome. That's a start. Oh, and that's a destroyer. I'm pretty sure it's like a hybrid cargo ship, though, so it's probably fine. Oh, well, that's not right. Hmm. Okay, let's see. How can I take all of you on? Yeah, and you can see these micro-missiles from Diabolavionics. They do a little bit of fragmentation damage. They're not really that dangerous. Their main point is to saturate point defense, because Diablo Avionics is focused on their their mech fighters. Right? They, they basically have Gundams. You know, copyright... You know, non-copyright infringing version of Gundams called uh, Wanzers. Alright, let's not die. Let's just get a little bit of space. So this is what the wolf is good for. Well, um, the wolf is good for a couple things, really. Thanks to Phase Skimmer, it makes a great distraction ship that can... It can mount like a Phase Lance to do a decent amount of damage, given the right opportunity. And it makes a great distraction ship in AI hands if, they, if you give it an officer with systems expertise. But it's not like super powerful compared to just grabbing an Omen or a Tempest or a Scarab. Usually I would favor those options. But, what it does do, that's kind of special, is in player hands, Phase Skimmer is a little bit crazy. As evidenced by how much effort Alex has made to try and nerf your capabilities with the... Uh, what's it called? The Radiant. Getting a battleship with a Phase Skimmer is pretty crazy. You know, the AI is okay at using mobility stuff, but in player hands, you can really punch a lot more above your weight class as evidenced here by the fact that I'm even taking on this fight instead of running away. Although now I'm starting to think that maybe I should have taken, like, combat endurance or something. Okay, now he's decided to run away, and I'm not going to be able to finish him off. That's fine. We can, we can just chase him down in the post-combat section. I mean, this thing's basically, yeah, this thing is like a, a freighter that has a few weapons, so it kind of contributes, but not much. Especially with those micro-missiles, they're not really doing anything. Because I don't have a lot of point defense that's trying to shoot down any fighters right now. Although I suppose with all my armor stripped off, they could do a significant amount of damage, in theory. Now, if I could get those engines to shut off, that would be really useful for me. Maybe what I should do is take some distance from the larger ship and try to 1v1 the enemy wolf. Because I should be able to do that, especially now that he's out of missiles. And I, I bothered to get Flux Quell Adjunct and a Flux... Uh, the other one. You know, the Flux boosting stuff. So I should be able to win a 1v1 here. Even though, for whatever reason, it looks like I'm not. Oh no, I'm, I'm winning, but just barely. So those flux upgrades were a good idea. If not for that, I would be... If I had to spend points on point defense, I would be losing here. Imagine that. Okay. Ooh, this is close. Getting a little risky here. Oh, come on. He's so close. He's one tap. Just br bring it home. Bring it home. And the overload ended. Okay, now he's going to run away. The good news is that in auto-resolve, there's zero risk to your own ships. So I'll be able to auto-resolve and kill both of those. Both the guys who ran away. Now I just need to get beside you. Yep, there we go. Yeah, those flares are not going to save you. Now we're in danger of malfunctions, though. Yeah, I really should have got combat endurance, shouldn't I? instead of Helmsmanship as my starting skill, because this is making it really obvious. 
I don't even have a time to fully dissipate. It's kind of a problem. I'm constantly dodging all these stupid micro-missiles. Let's vent. Yeah, there we go. Level 5. Well, that probably makes it a lot harder, doesn't it? Yeah, those kinetic weapons are enough to be threatening now. And my engines are starting to shut off, which is uh, not good. I'm out of charges, so I can't actually dodge beside your shield the way that I want to. I need to get your engines off. Iron, Iron Cannon, please. Turn off his engines. Nope. Those my engines. My engines are turning off. Turn off his engine. There we go. Okay. Right, and now my engines are... This is... How is he repairing so fast? Does he have damage control? My goodness. Well, that's not good. Actually, what happens? You, I believe you just restart with, like, a kite. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. You just start again with a kite. No. You start with more than a kite. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So if I had taken... I really should have started with combat endurance there. Because the thing that killed me there was my stats dropping and the malfunctions from when I ran out of combat readiness. But I was thinking, no, 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 the extra speed and maneuverability would be more important. But since I have unstable injectors anyways, that probably would have been fine. Well, hold on. Since I died, I guess this is a... This is Big Brain Energy 2. This is a different guy. The other guy, that's a... That was a different guy. That was a preview. Okay? That total Unrelated, really. Believe me. I would know. I'm kind of an expert in these sorts of things. Well, first off... Uh, since this is the first time that we're starting this, of course, why don't we grab a few things for ourselves? For starters, there's a free ship. The ISS Nova. You know, let's just throw on a few defenses for it, so that it doesn't die if it gets deployed, but it's not going to get deployed, so that won't be a problem. Now, honestly, my experience with the kite, you might think, well, why didn't you start with the kite instead of the shepherd there? My experience with the kite is that it's not much better, to be quite honest. I'd rather have the logistics capacity that the shepherd has. Well, if I've got a wayfarer, that's more of a combat freighter, so I guess we are smuggling. I mean, that's something that I definitely could have done. That, that battle was pretty close, and you do start with 20,000 credits. So if you think about it, 20,000 credits is enough to buy, like, a hound, right? So if you throw in one, like, maybe throw in a couple of those in addition to the shepherd, and that fight was definitely doable. But I decided to push my luck, because it's more interesting that way. I mean, surely this minor setback won't mean the doom of humanity to the incoming bug swarms. Surely. I'm, there won't be any problems. Just trust me on that. I know what I'm talking about. Except that I don't because I have not used a lot of these mods before. But I mostly know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to need to have some cash in order to buy drugs. Contest N, as always, very reliable. It's a bit annoying that the Hivers also get shown here. As a matter of fact, the Hivers will post bounties just like any other faction, even though they're not really supposed to operate like other factions. So it's a bit weird. You might want to... I think you can tweak that. I think that's something that you can adjust with the settings because there are other villain factions that are supposed to take over the sector that I believe don't do this. Well, they do still show up here, but for bounties and stuff. It's a bit weird when the Hivers are like, hey, human, here's some money. Go fight that deserter for us. I don't know. Seems a little out of character for the devouring swarm that's going to just kill us all. A little out of character, but I can live with it. Yeah, I think I'll just head over to Conta's Den, buy some drugs, and then we sell them. Looks like over at Spindle is the best price. 
But that being said, it's a little further away. So I'd rather go to, what's it called, Don? Yeah, e Brazil. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just go straight over to Conta's Den, buy some drugs, and get this train started. And then once I've made some drug money, then we'll go do bounties. want to take a little bit of a different approach than just smuggling. But here we are. It's just too reliable. I mean, with what am I supposed to fight with this? If the wolf couldn't do it, then this fleet certainly can't. Although, to be fair, there's definitely some things I could have done to make the fight more doable. Uh-huh. What can you do? Reckless again? Why is there so many reckless officers? Everybody's like, well, to be fair, there are bugs coming to kill us all. I think I've mentioned, have I mentioned that yet? That there are bugs and they're going to kill us all? Yeah, I think that's kind of, yeah, I think a few people might feel a little more reckless, a little more careless than usual in the face of such a catastrophic threat. To be fair, that's a, that's not like unexpected. All right, let's fill up on as much as we can. We've got more than enough fuel to get around, so we're gonna go to Ibrazil and sell it to these guys at dawn. And hopefully, not get caught. Because if we get caught, we're not really equipped to deal with it. Although we do actually have a story point now. So worst comes to worst, we can run away. Because if I spawn in with a new fleet after dying, that would be an issue because I have zero credits. So that would mean that I would somehow have to make credits with nothing. That would not be easy. Because you don't start with enough fuel to do exploration contracts. You don't start with enough ships. Well, maybe if I spawn in with a wolf. Maybe I could do an easy bounty contract, or really what you should be doing are system bounties. System bounties don't pay very well, but you can pick up like little pirate ships. You can pick up fleets of like two hounds. And if you do that enough times, you'll get enough credits that you can actually buy something. So there is that. Yeah, there's nobody here. We're fine. Boom. And that's the same price we would have gotten for killing that bounty. This, expensive, but also, targeting units are pretty good. So let's get that right away. Gonna need more fuel, gonna need a lot more supplies, because we're very short. Alright, now let's buy ourselves some combat ships. And I'm not really seeing anything I want here. So let's head over to TriTac. Or no, I should be heading over to the Persian League. But then again, I do want a wolf. For early game, a wolf is a pretty good flagship. That's another story point. Very cool. That is, you know what? I could spend those to S mod some stuff onto my wolf and make it even better. And then I'll be able to level up because I'll get a ton of bonus XP from the combat, which will then let me pick up combat endurance so I can kite even longer. I mean, a Tempest. Ah, uh, man. The Tempest. What a ship. I think in most cases I would rather have... Well, if it's player piloted, it's probably really good still. But it's also a bit expensive, as you can see here. I believe an Omen is half the price. And it's not like an Omen is strictly worse. I mean, it's It's... Fewer deployment points, half the price. Provides more defensive utility that, to, to complement your larger ships. Even if it's not as offensively capable. And see, look at that. Oh, it's not quite half the price. Okay, it's two-thirds the price. That's a bit more. That's a bit closer. All right. Yeah, 25,000. Wait, was that Tempest on the black market? Because if it, if it was, then yeah, this is like... 
55% of the price. And I mean, omens are really good, but I did use them a lot in the last playthrough. So, don't want to use them too much as a crutch. A pirate wolf, of course. The degraded phase skimmer. Love to see it. I, I really don't want to use this. Even though it is quite cheap. How many ordinance points does it have? Yeah, it's got like 10 less ordinance points too. No thanks. So, omens are banned. I, I would grab it right now, if not for the fact that I'm, I'm banning them. Omens are banned. I mean, I've got to give the bugs a chance, really. If I, if I didn't ban omens, it would just be over. Especially since they use a lot of fighters. Omens love to eat fighters. What can you do? Are you reckless? No. That's crazy, man. You might be the only one. Everybody else is losing their cool. You heard there's, you know, there's a few bugs coming in. No reason to freak out. I am going to want monitors in the long term. But monitors by themselves aren't great. They don't do a ton. Especially since it would eat up all my remaining credits. A lasher, though. This is like half the price of an omen. It's pretty solid. What I should really be looking for would be centurions so I can fit the midline theme. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, reinforced bulkheads doesn't mean that I can recover it no matter what. Alright. But do I have any weapons for it? Yeah, that's a problem. Well, railguns are a good start. Uh-huh. Swarmers, pretty reliable against frigates. And this is a frigate itself, so caps, caps, caps. Max out those caps. Every time. Triple railgun. That's probably too much, to be honest. But I don't really have other weapons to work with here. Definitely want a railgun here in the turret slot. Okay, let's throw on those. Get more flux, because more flux is more good. Unstable injector. Uh, it does hurt your range, but extra speed is good. So I'm, I'm going to look for Vulcans and some auto cannons. Actually, I might steal these. I mean, do you really need them that badly? I don't think so. I think I need them more badly than you do. Uh, well, then there's only two there. It's not great. Yeah, I'm not super happy with this. Alright, let's see. If I grab that, no, yeah. This is, uh, this is a little awkward. Alright, let's take this off. We'll put it back. And we're just going to find some stuff. Find weapons. Not enough crew. Yeah, we'll have to buy more crew. We'll have to buy a little more supplies, and then we can go do some bounty hunting. Well, can I? Or am I being a little too gung-ho? Because this is a lasher and not a wolf. That's a different beast. Oh, and there's also the Tor light cannon. Kind of like a little baby heavy mauler. Because people... Modders really like to add small ballistic weapons with higher hit strength. They love those for some reason. They're like light assault gun. That's too wimpy. We need something with less DPS but more hit strength. I mean, do we? It definitely a lot of that stuff changes the sh the shipbuilding dynamic because well, a lot of the ship's capabilities depends on its weapon mounts. Some weapon mounts are good at some things and some are bad at other things. But once you start adding in modded weapons, well, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? Suddenly you can do things that were never intended for that weapon mount, and that changes the way that things work. These could be really good for a ship like this. Let's see. Let's have just a little bit of a look. 
just a teensy tiny peak against another lasher. That's like the perfect test. A bit heavy on the anti-armor here, but for the most part, early pirate ships aren't going to have super strong shields anyways. That's probably fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Although I'm not... S now that I've got these these uh, big heavy cannons, I'm not sure I need the missiles that badly. Speaking of, maybe I should get that. Get a little more speed. Yeah, that's probably good. Let's get some more of that. Let's get some more of these. Let's repair our ships. I think the smart thing to do here would be to do another drug run. But I'm a little lazy. I don't want to go to Contest End, so instead I'll just buy them here. And this won't cost... See, this is, this is not only faster, but it doesn't cost me any fuel. Yeah, and they're not going to find anything. What do you think? You find something. My, my cargo hold is only 90% drugs. Of course you're not going to find anything. I... I mean, actually, they probably should find them in this situation. It's not, I don't even have shielded cargo holds on anything. But of course, things are a little bit biased in favor of the player at smaller quantities so that the early game is a little more forgiving. That's just the way it's designed. I don't think I made much money there, did I? Hmm. Let me double check that. Because I could have sworn I started with 6,000 and I've ended with 6,000. I thought I was supposed to be making money. It's not like this the shortage just magically ended, has it? Or maybe it has. Maybe it did, maybe it did in fact end because this doesn't show up here. I guess I missed that. Well, we're just going to do this again. But go to somewhere else. Let's go to Epiphany. Yeah, that place is relatively close. Algebar. Right here. Of course, the path always needs a steady supply of drugs. I mean, how else are they supposed to contact mud in their dreams? If not through a copious amounts of space fentanyl. Yeah, I'd like a weapons cache. That sounds pretty good right about now. Nah, that's too far out, and it's a survey ship. I want to get to the bounty hunting part, to be quite honest. So, we're going to be not doing some of these things. Well, this is pretty close to where we were doing bounties earlier. It's probably fine. Yeah. Oh, these bounties still exist. Wait, I could go get revenge if I get there in 20 days. Not likely. Let's just unimportant those. Oh yeah, and also there's this bounty board. I think this is added by VIC, Vic. I believe that's where this comes from. And then there's these bounties that you can add up here. There's a lot more details, which is kind of interesting. And instead of just like, here's a guy, go kill that guy. You can click here, get a little lore, assassination of the hegemony target. The posting is offered by the, the Vic, 100,000 credits. So this interface could be used to definitely build off into something really interesting. But it's not vanilla, that's from a mod. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get any new bounty officer until these ones expire. Ooh, wow. The sky is really pretty here. There's also an exclamation mark. Lud's Embrace. Hmm. And that retribution is looking a little funny. And there's a lot of S mods. It's probably an Xerolin thing. Perhaps a Knights of Lud thing as well. 
Well, I don't think I'm really sneaking up on this planet, but nobody's stopping me, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, there we go. We doubled our credits. So now we can afford supplies, afford fuel. Just barely, just barely. Okay. And we're at a place that should be selling some ballistic options. Right, and I've only got machine guns. I'm not gonna rely on those for point defense. I guess I could go with Sabos, since the these are already providing more than enough anti... Yeah, and then I can throw in like mining lasers as just token point defense. Not ideal, but it's better than nothing. You have houndsmanship. I think you'll be able to survive. Yeah, let's give it a spin. Let's go find an easy bounty. Yeah, they really don't care. They can definitely see me. Well, it's good to know that the Ludic Path is not bothering me right now. It's very kind of you. Yeah, these are about to expire before I get there. I think. Maybe I can actually get there in time. Let's try it. Let's get revenge. Now, unfortunately, two of their ships got away at just like a sliver of health. So they're definitely repaired by now. Ultimately, I really only killed one. Five days remaining. Well, it said... Hold on. How, fa how long is it going to take to get there? You know, I feel like it misled me here. It, 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 11 versus 16 seemed like I could get there, because that's at base burn level. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not getting there in time. Okay, well, there's no point in being out here, then. And all of these are about to expire. So there's not really any bounties for me to do. Is there any system bounties? Okay, let's go do that one. That's what you should be doing, really. Unless, of course, you're ready to do some gaming moves. Some powerful gaming moves and overcome the odds. Which I almost did, but... Not quite... Not quite there yet. Alright. So there's a system bounty here. 39 days on that. Let's have a look. They're probably hanging out around the jump points. Although sometimes the pirates are kind of already screwed over by the time you get here and there's not much to do. Sometimes that happens. Okay, I'm not seeing anything here. Maybe they're at the outer jump point. That would make more sense. Uranus Jumper. What a name. Who are you? Pirates? Can I kill you? Yeah, okay. This is exactly what you're looking for early on. Cerberus, Cerberus, Hound, Hound, Hound. This is what you're supposed to be killing with your wolf. These guys, because, uh... Well... They kind of can't do anything. They don't, e they don't even got no shields. I mean, look at them. You just kite them. All right, I've got to turn those on auto fire because they're not. My little baby heavy molars. I've learned my lesson. Come on, die. There we go. You do have a shield. Let me let me fix that. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, see, look, hounds will just chase down the stupid little kite. You gotta get it some... Probably want unstable injectors on that, to be honest. I should have done that. That would help it a lot. There 
There we go. No shields for you, my friend. And I'm too fast for you. Yeah, 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 you can use your burn drive all you like. It's a little... it's not gonna work. Yeah, for situations like the early game, the light assault gun is actually pretty good. Even though I think... I get the general sense that most people don't like it, and I myself don't use it too much. But for this kind of early game stage, it's pretty good. Assuming you're using, like, a Lasher, or a Centurion, or something along those lines. But usually you end up using a lot of high-tech frigates in the early game anyway, so you can't actually mount it. That being said, this modded gun, these little baby heavy maulers, are in fact pretty good so far. Which is probably why they're not in the vanilla game. Yeah, see, there, there there he goes. What did I say? What did I say? You're bad at your job. Get out of here. Alright, I think he's running away now, though. Yeah, no, that's not... This is not happening. I don't think we're catching this. Yeah, let's just claim victory now. Why don't you do something useful and then get that in the auto-resolve? There we go. Now I could grab all of these, but I don't really have a ton of supplies, so I'm not going to. And there we go, we now have another story point. Okay. 6,700 credits. Yeah, not a super exciting amount. See what else we got. Free stuff. Yeah, they try to fight you even though they're not really equipped to do so. You can just stay at home. All right, we uh, we're fine. We don't need you. I appreciate the enthusiasm, little kite, but it's not happening. Oh, and this time we've got a wolf. Well, that's where the railgun is going to come real handy. Yeah, I think this weapon setup works really, really well. Against more armored frigates, and probably even against destroyers, these, uh, these... Tor cannons seem to do pretty well. And against more high-tech enemies, I've got Sabos, plus a railgun. I'd be a little worried if I saw fighters with only with only these mining lasers to really work with. Oh, come on. You you have helmsmanship. You should be able to outrun this. Unless, I mean, Cerberus aren't that fast. I mean, the kite is, but is it really corralling you that effectively? Mine certainly wasn't doing that. All right, hold on, hold on. I'll get him. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to talk about your car's extended warranty? You look like you're going to need it. Uh, nope. Salamander. And there goes half my weapons. That's fine. Because he is not running away anyways, so we're just going to kill him. Easy. Alright, now I can grab this. Nope, I'm being chased. Uh, I would really like to get... Well, my crew's a little under strength, so... That's a few wolves. That's a fair number of wolves. Those are going to be a little scarier. And this is, like, busted up, so... That's a bit annoying. You know, let's do emergency repairs instead of running away. A little bonus XP will help me level up, too. 15%? Sure. Honestly, at this point, I should be equipping the, the Hermes with some weapons and throwing it in as a distraction, too. Let's have you guys work together and see if that does better. 
But the fact is, you're both really low on hull, and out of all the enemies, wolves are probably some of the more dangerous ones that pirates can field. Alright, let's, let's... Let's delete them before... Yep, there we go. And all you've gotten is IR Auto Lance, which, to be fair, against Frigate Tier Armor does a decent amount of damage. But against my shields, it's kind of useless. How are you guys faring? Not the best. Definitely seem like you've seen better days, and yeah, now it's gonna run away. And then it's gonna chase me. Yeah. Of course. What else would happen, really? Oh, I gotta do this by myself, I guess. Yeah, good night. Good night. That's a double kill. Double kill! Overkill! Kill-tacular! Unfortunately, not quite that fast. Oh, come on! Really? It dodged all of that? Are you serious? Right, let's not take damage from those missiles. Yep. And I'm overloaded. Man, this is just not going well. And I'm out of Sabo, so I'm kind of screwed. And here we are again. Unless I want to deploy the uh, the Hermes. Yeah, against something like this, the wolf would do really, really well. There we go. Yeah, we can just leave at this point. Hey, I leveled up. I mean, if this is humanity's hero, this guy, then humanity really is screwed. Like, this this is your guy, really. This guy. A Cerberus needs special equipment? Really? Huh. Now, to be fair, I do have 21,000 credits again. But we're on this sort of treadmill at the bottom. This is kind of why black market trading is so good in the early game. is because it's so much lower risk. It's partly because it makes a lot of money, but partly because it's lower risk. Right? It's fun to take on pirate fleets like these, where it's like just at the edge. Are you almost beating them, but they almost beat you? That's a lot of fun. But then you end up on this endless treadmill for every loss that sort of keeps you stuck in the same place. If you actually want to make progress, you need to take low-risk operations. Which is kind of, you know, another game that I, you, you might have seen me play, FTL, handles this really well because it's a roguelike game. So you, you kind of expect to lose. And for that reason, the way that the game is designed, you're supposed to do run after run after run in sequence. Well, you know, maybe not in the same day, but the whole idea is, hey, you lost? That's okay. And because of that, you can push yourself into situations where you really are at the edge of your seat because you could lose. And that ends up being really fun. Whereas a game like this, because it's more, there's more progression that you're trying to aim for, those really fun situations where you're like, damn, I could lose this if I'm not careful. And as I've already shown, I've done that twice wasn't fully prepared and so lost a couple of them that's fun to do but it also keeps you in the same spot which i'm not really sure how you would mitigate that because like yeah of course if you lose your fleet you shouldn't be making progress but you want to be in those situations where you're losing your fleet in order to have fun and you say well I'll just take hull restoration that kind of fixes it kind of but that only works if you win again you still have to win the fight. It's just that now you can afford to lose more ships. Oh well. Just a little talk about game design here. Alright, how am I going to dig myself out of this? Probably with drugs. Go back over to Megek. And then go back... Iron Shell. Interesting. Although probably not. Probably just go to Epiphany. It's right there. 
Yeah. All I've got is this little guy. Speaking of this little guy, let's throw an expanded cargo holds. This Hermes that I got from that station. You know, maybe this is what happened with Paul Bingus. Because that one started with just the kite. And here, I've got to the same place, you know, just with extra steps. That's, that's actually kind of funny. It's mildly amusing. Alright, Conta's Den, here we come. I'm sure the pirates won't attack us. I mean, I'm just a small little guy. I'm just a small little guy. Yeah, as if. As if that matters. What if I want them to kill me? What if I want them to try? Oh, they're actually chasing me, shit. Wait, no. Get out of here. Okay, get up. Go away. Yeah, you overshot, you... You absolute buffoon. You've revealed yourself to be a complete fool. You overshot it by a mile. How do you even mess that up? Alright, well, drug time. I can only fit 7,000 credits worth. Incredible. That being said, I can buy a crappy hound. And now we can fit some more. Although I'm going to need a few more crew. Let's get up to... You know what? Let's get up to 50. Let's just go up to 50 so we can buy more ships very soon. And yeah, now I can buy fit more than I can actually afford. So let's take that off to reduce our maintenance costs. I throw that back on. And... Hmm. Yeah, I wanted to focus... Yeah, I think Combat Endurance is a pretty good pick because, I mean, that's what screwed me over with the wolf in the first place. Because I want to go down the red tree first. It's... Well, it's more interesting. I like doing this because it makes the game harder. There's a, there's a really hard thing that players have to do where the game gets easier as you know what you're doing more. And so you kind of have to take off the training wheels in order to bring the difficulty back. But it doesn't feel good to do that, right? You want to stick to like the industry tree because it makes the early game so easy. But then what happens is people then complain about how easy the early game is. It's like, well, that's because you're using all these tools that are there to make it easier for generally less experienced players. So if you want a challenge and you're more experienced, you got to do things that are not as optimal. And in this case, I'm going into the combat tree first. Although to be fair, the combat tree can be optimal if you start with like, you know, maybe the hammerhead start and then you slap safety rides on that, get some of these combat skills, you can go pretty crazy against a lot of, a lot of fleets. So it can be really good. I'm just choosing not to. And that's sometimes and I think that's a, the right choice to make. It's more fun. I don't like these options. Machine gun mining blaster. Sure. Let's go with that. Right, throw on some bulkheads, throw on some injectors, throw on a little more vent. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna need more of these. All right, I can't repair my ships here because it's hostile. All right, well, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. Epiphany is right next door. already scanned that, so that's no good. Yeah, they don't see, they didn't bother me, even though my transponder was off. I guess I'm just too small to be worth their notice. You know, that's valid. I am pretty much nothing right now. Oh, please, leave me alone. What? Oh, what? Wait. Oh, wait, no, both of them are pursuing me. Hold on. For a second I was like, maybe this is a pirate and they're coming to kill the pirates? No, they're both pursuing me. Why? Like, what do you think you're going to accomplish here? 
I'm just a little guy. And now I'm a little guy with cash. Also need fuel. Okay, well, let's see if we can get out of here. I'm not going to buy any ships because I'd like to hold on to my cash in case we get screwed. It's a nice combination if you were piloting like a scarab or something, but I don't think I need you for that. Would you like to talk? A thousand two hundred credits. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's probably like the only time where that money, that few credits actually matters is in this exact situation. The big one's still chasing me for some reason. Go away. Okay. Well, now we're gonna go back to Conta's den. I need to be able to afford enough ships that I can actually go do combat. Uh-huh. Let's turn that off. Not forget that. Okay, we got that. Cool. So this time, let's go... Where are we going? Probably not Epiphany. Let's go somewhere else. Lemtis? That's the next closest place. A little further away, but we can pay more money. And of course it's another Pather planet. Man. They must be having a lot. They must be having some pretty crazy prayer ceremonies. If they need all of these. All right, Chalcedon, here we come. It's, wait, Beholder Station. Ah, oh, that's what that is. Let's see. Yeah, and you can see Battle Station Cygnus, Knights of Blood. So it's technically Knights of Blood are like a separate faction, but they automatically get allied with the Ludic Church. So they're and they have the same color, so it's really impossible to distinguish them. Okay. You know, I should be activating these gates, since I do start with the device anyways. Oh bother. Let's turn around. Yes. Why are you so fast? Burn 9? That's an Invictus! I see that. Don't think you can fool... That's an Invictus. Are you telling me it has an augmented dry field? Because NPC fleets never have augmented dry fields. I s that's... That's illegal. You're making that up. That's not how... NPC fleets never use those. Wow, I really barely made any cash from that trip, huh? That's unfortunate. And not really want to buy anything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, leave me alone. Bye. Alright, well, let's go activate this instead of not using the Enidus device. Okay. Can't travel anywhere because I haven't activated the other ones, but I will be able to soon. Probably a good idea to hit up the Persian League that I can actually get some midline ships. And, you know, maybe that will be the key that unlocks these bounties for me. Once I actually start sticking to the theme, suddenly I, the game will be easy. That's how it works, obviously. Yeah, let's go here. We can go buy stuff from Mazalot. It's a, I mean, it's not a military world, but it is size 7, so it should have something. And then there's the gate there. So, that will be worth activating. Very cool. Yeah, Centurions are relatively cheap and they're solid. Oh my goodness gracious. Another. They're like, wait, let us pay us money. Go away. Be gone. Be gone from my sight. You vermin who crawl and beg and whine. You pitiful creatures. 
You deserve not the light of mud. You are merely peasants and beggars and parasites. All right, what have you got? Vigilance? No, that's not what I'm looking for. Brawler? Honestly, the brawler should just be cheaper. I don't think it's very good. Even though it is the longest range frigate you can get, with hard flux weapons anyways, you can make some... You can make beam weapons a bit longer range, for sure. But when it comes to hard flux options, you, know, you can put HVDs on these things. And if you stack up enough bonuses, they get pretty decent range. It's just, there's not really much of a point to that. It doesn't accomplish much. Ah, really. So there's no... You have the... the out of the four frigate options, you have the two that I don't really care for. The Vigilance is fine as a support ship, if it's supporting a larger ship. But by itself, I don't think it's going to be very good. What can you do? Missile specialization. Cautious. Hmm. All right, Ilm. Surely Ilm will have good stuff. Surely. This tiny little planet. I mean, they do have Centurions. They're a lot more expensive. I mean, to be fair, yeah, of course. Even even with that, like, this is less deployment points than a Brawler, but a lot more expensive, and for good reason. Although, it's as just as expensive as an Omen, which is a bit crazy. It's no wonder I always default to Omens. These things are just as expensive, but an Omen's... I mean, an Omen's six deployment points for a reason, compared to this being four. I mean, yeah, Centurions are cool and all, but at this price, really? Huh. That's a little wild. I mean, with this little cash, I should just do, be doing more drug runs, really. I should be doing more drug runs, buying myself another wolf, and then redeeming myself, because... I mean, really, the wolf should be able to take on a lot of enemy ships. So, speaking of, let's head over to... Let's head back over here. And hopefully they have a decent wolf for sale. Although I don't think I have enough credits for it. But I should be able to do a little more drug smuggling, if that's the case. Speaking of, I should keep an eye out for bounties. A Buffalo Mark II can be easily destroyed. They've only got a single wolf. Yeah, that's that's looking pretty solid. This is... You know, call me crazy, but I don't think we have a shot at this one. You know, you know I know that there's not really any good evidence for that statement. It's just a hunch. But, you know, I trust my intuition here. Okay. He Brazil. Let's -a go like Mario. Oh wait, I took wait a minute. Yeah, I took these. I forgot. I totally forgot. I might as well just do them now. I've got enough fuel to get here. Not this one though. But yeah, I can just do that, immediately get thirty thousand credits, come back, and then buy a wolf. I'm a little short on supplies. But that won't be a problem. We'll get supplies when we're there. Oh wait, I have zero heavy machinery. Yeah, our, our, our salvaging efficiency is going to be terrible. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. That's my favorite phrase to say when things are definitely not fine. Okay. Where is it? Inactive gate. Well, that's convenient. I can just teleport back. That makes life so much easier. Thank you. Inactive gate. Awesome. And are you in this system? Yes, you are, in fact, in this exact system. What is this? Mudskipper. Level 5 officer. I'll take that. 
Yeah, we're not even getting supplies from these things. At least we know where to find our target, because it's right near ne next to this gate. Speaking of level 5 officer, what can you do? Interesting. This is a very offensive-oriented high-tech. This would be like a high-tech frigate. You know, energy weapon mastery, combat endurance. Missile's generally not a high-tech frigate thing, so it's a bit off, but all right. We'll see what we can do with you. Oh, free stuff. Awesome. I like free stuff. I could use a little bit of free stuff right now. But I should probably do that after getting some heavy machinery. Instead of wasting. Because I, I can just transfer over here, buy some heavy machinery, and then transfer back and actually salvage that stuff. And then I can come back, buy a wolf, and we can get on with our lives. And part of that includes... I should probably... yeah. I should probably include like a machine gun here, just as a little point defense. So this can act as a distraction during combat. Speaking of, I think what the best way to do that is to... Wait, no, you don't want to put anything on it. What you do is you militarize it first. Because that unlocks safety overrides. And then you max out caps. And then this thing will distract enemies by existing, but it's not because it has no weapons, it's not going to approach them. Yeah, that's the that's the play. Okay, first, we're gonna want heavy machinery. You guys can have that. Sixty Oh come on, you couldn't pay me one more credit. You couldn't pay me one more. They know what they're doing. They know. I don't need to buy any of that. 20. Yeah. Any good stuff that I could buy right now. Honestly, buying a Wayfarer to get more storage capacity might be nice. Do you have... Yes, you do have shielded cargo holds. So the pirate one, that could be good. It has a D mod, though. Compromised storage. Yeah, it's only 300 storage instead of 400. Versus this one is... Almost twice as expensive. Yeah, let's just buy this one. Nice and cheap. Okay, I'll, I'll buy a couple supplies. There we go. Now let's get out of here. Let's go salvage some stuff. Then we can come back. And then we should be in a good spot. You know, relatively speaking, compared to where we were before. Exploration. There's not like a gate near there, is there? Nah. Don't think I could even get there if I wanted to at this point. But I'm just gonna let the timer run out. No need to abandon it early. Aside from trolling late, late trolling late Tritachion, which I could do because I'm not gonna be joining them today. Doing a little trolling never hurt anybody. You know, except the victim. And I'm not that guy. I'm not the victim. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's not hurting anybody important. It's a decent haul. None of them were recoverable without a story point, unfortunately. But that is what it is. If I head over to... Actually, let's see. Where can we sell this the best? We can sell it the best... Uh, over at the Zahn Empire. By the looks of it. Yeah, I'm not really gonna... I'm not gonna bother with that. Forget about that. Alright. Now we can head over here. We've got a bunch of supplies. We've got some stuff we can sell. 30,000. Oh, look at that. It's right there once again can't do that I'm not even close to doing that and look there's a there's a raid this is a Nexerolin feature they're raiding each other speaking of I haven't seen oh there they are of course invasion invasion yep here they come 
And let me just be clear, it is very rare that the main factions actually fend these off. So, an invasion means, here comes a, a massive amount of hiver ships, and they are going to take over the planet. Now the good news is that when you start your own colony, the invasion fleets are scaled to your colony. So, if you've got like a size 3 colony and the hivers send an invasion, you can actually hold it off pretty easily, in my experience. I mean, darn, the omen is banned. It's just so unfortunate, really. I've never wanted, <laughs> never wanted a wolf this bad. Like, look, we're not, we're not doing, we're not doing high tech. So stop trying to give me all the good high tech stuff. This is not, this is not the way. This is not the path. All right, surely the Starforge will have something good for me. Uh huh. Another omen, of course. Where do you even buy wolves? Do I have to go to the hegemony? And they do have their own paint job for wolves. I guess it's worth a shot. Uh, let's, uh, let's see, military. Yeah, let's go to there. Bounty ended. Zon Empire. Speaking of the Zon Empire, Something interesting about them is that they get a size 8 colony. In vanilla, the only size 8 is Chico Monstock, which itself can has like two-thirds of the sector's population, just due to the way that those scale. Chico Monstock, well, is it two-thirds? It's something like a half. It's like a ridiculously large percentage of the sector's population. So the Zon Empire having a size 8 puts them shockingly close to the hegemony, at least in terms of population, not in terms of influence. Okie dokie. Yes, I am in fact seeing a, a centurion here, but on the open market it's too expensive. Is this all you have in a military, really? Come on, you can do better than that. I deserve better options than this. You don't know how hard I've worked for this. For the last probably over an hour now. Oh, we are really slow. Yeah. Yeah, I should probably militarize this. Just to get a little more burn speed out of it. Didn't think of that, but yes, indeed, this is... A bit of a slow munchkin. So that should be not too bad now. Man, you guys just have terrible options. At this point... Yeah, no, I'm not going to have time to get to that. Yeah, at this point I might as well just buy some fuel, go do that. And then I'll come back and look for something that I can use for bounty hunting. Maybe I'll actually be able to afford a hammerhead. We'll see. But, I'm not going to be putting safety overrides on it, because... Uh, once again, uh, going back to the discussion about uh, doing things that are suboptimal because it's going to be more fun, I don't use safety overrides. They make the early game pretty cheesy, because they're just really good in the early game. And they make the late game really boring, because if you're going to use safety overrides in your fleet, it's either just like, oh, you slap it on some frigates, boom, now they're really fast. Cool. Or you slap it on everything, and now all of the, and the problem with it is, builds with safety of rides are extremely linear. You just slap on high flux, high DPS weapons that are close range, and you just do that on everything. If it's a medium energy mount, oh, there's a heavy blaster. If it's a medium ballistic mount, oh look, that's a machine gun or whatever. It's like, yay, that's so exciting. I have no defenses against this. Okay, you shouldn't be chasing me. I'm too small. I should also not have... The I'm also now realizing I should not have that on. Did they not see me? I, I, I thought I'm in their sensor range. What happened there? Oh, you... Wh what? Really? I 
<laughs> getting caught by a single drone ship. And of course, if, if I try to disengage, it's going to hunt us down. Yeah, of course. That being said, no, I would lose the buffalo. That's the problem. All right, well, we'll do this. Life is hard. Right, this is a this is very much a zero to hero story. This is not this is not somebody who has handled the sector on a silver spoon. I mean, we've earned it. Or we I guess we will, assuming we don't screw this up. Right, it is some distance away, of course. It's not gonna be easy. I'm going to actually have to search for this one. Where are you, little ship? Come to me. I only wish to have a discussion with your organs. Your little ship bits. And it's a legion. Of course, it's a legion. I don't think I'm going to salvage that, because, yeah, that's a 14. We're just going to leave that... So unexplored ruins here, and if I go to salvage, yep. So if I need a legion, then I'll come back here. There's a, I believe there's a f exactly four of those around the sector, in addition to other ships that get scattered around the sector. Last time I found a paragon, this time I'm finding the legion 14. Am I going to use it? No. No, I'm not. I might as well salvage it, that being the case, but it does feel like a bit of a waste when there's only four of them. I guess I'll just leave it alone. I'll admire its beauty from a distance. Okay. With all of that being said, what do I do now? I guess I go to the nearest gate. Which I should have done in the first place, but uh... I just kind of passed here automatically, didn't really think about it too much. Not like we burned that much fuel. Fuel is cheap enough anyways. Let's head back to the core worlds. Buy ourselves something that can actually fight. Hello. That's a lot of fuel. Okay, I could recover that. So I'm going to leave it. Well, there's ruins here, not that I can salvage them. Let's turn this back on. Alright. Give me something nice. Give me something nice. Actually, now that I think about it, if the Centurion is 25,000, yeah, th it's like half the price of a hammerhead. That's not a good deal. Unfortunately, I can't quite afford a hammerhead. Starving Crow. That's actually an awesome name. I'll probably save that one. Okay. I kind of want the hammerhead, but that's probably not a good idea. Even if I try to sell something here to afford it. Yeah, alright, well, the Persian League is a letdown. I feel like that's a premonition for things to come. You know, not to point fingers or anything, but... That's the wrong button. Oh well. We're getting there, but it's fancier. I mean, when you think about it, emergency burn is just a fancy sustained burn. Because you can do fancy maneuvers. Alright, you guys will give us something good, won't ya? I mean, you want my money, don't you? That's what you're all about. I don't think they I don't think these guys have heard of what a wolf even is. Wolf? What is that? Speaking of, I should probably have a weapon that can actually go on the wolf. Because right now I don't have anything. Maybe something like this. Maybe a little something like that. 
All right, this is start. Really? Oh no, you're probably hitting them, right? You're hitting them, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, do your job. Patrol's actually helping me for once. Incredible. Okay, let's grab that, let's grab that. Excellent. Huh. Okay, there's a wolf, but again, it's a pirate wolf. Who even sells wolves, now that I think about it? It seems like Tritachion just doesn't. So who actually sells them? I don't want the pirate wolf. It's just not going to be good. Hmm. Midline options aren't great. Yeah, I guess what I should just be doing is smuggling. I should stick to smuggling until I can get, like, a decent number of frigates. They're not going to be omens, though, so I'm probably going to want lashers. Right, if, I, if I can't use omens, and tempests are too expensive, then I would f recommend falling back on lashers and centurions. Those perform pretty decently. So I'm, but then if I'm going to do that, I'm going to want a few of them. So what I should be doing is smuggling in order to save up, you know, like 80,000 credits, get a decent number of lashers and centurions, and then we can take them into combat. But that's the plan. That's the next step because, I mean, we started with very little. We've earned a little bit of money. We've earned a level. We've earned a couple story points. So some progress has been made, which is not very much. Humanity is still very much in a bad spot. Let's see, have they actually taken any planets yet? It looks like the invasion force is currently in system. Versus local defenses, superior. Ground forces, evenly matched. The outcome is uncertain. It always says evenly matched, but then they always win anyways. At least, that's my experience. Will that be true this time? I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.